Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And well, I have, I have a lot to talk about today because I'm going to do recommended systems. Well, systems priced from about $2,000 to about $4,000. And when I say systems, I mean uh, complete systems with speakers, uh, electronics, meaning an amplifier, and sometimes a source, which would be either a DAC or a turntable. But the focus is primarily on speakers and amplifiers. Now, I, I've done this before. My first one was on complete system for $500. I did one on $1,200 systems, $1,500 systems, and I will link to the previous episodes in the description below today's video. But today's video is, yeah, $2,000 to $4,000. A lot of good stuff that I've never covered before in any of these systems videos. As for the prices that I'm saying here, first of all, I may get them wrong, <laughs> but I'm, I'm doing my best to give you the, the prices as far as I can tell as of today. But the prices are the list price, meaning you may find these products for less. They are in US dollars. And the speaker prices that I'm listing today are for pairs of speakers. And I may forget to say pairs, but whatever it is, I'm always saying, the price I'm saying is for a pair of speakers. There will be an Audiophiliac viewer system of the day at the conclusion of today's episode. And I'm going to say it in the front, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. You can hit that button right down there. It's super easy to do. When you hit the button to subscribe, just hit the bell and you'll be notified every time there is an incredible or even not so incredible episode. Anyway, thank you for that. And if you have already subscribed, thank you so much for doing so. Moving on to the actual recommended systems. Well, we're going to start with speakers. And the first speaker up is a floor standing speaker. It's the Wharfdale Evo 4.3. You know, it, it is kind of different. Uh, first of all, it has a two inch dome mid-range driver. I, yeah, you don't see too many dome mid-ranges, right? And it has a folded ribbon tweeter, and the folded ribbon is also a bit larger. Now, of course, all of the details of these products that I talk about will be <laughs> uh, covered in length in the videos for my review. And all of the products I refer to, nearly all of the products I refer to, have been reviewed by me. It, it's just a really nice speaker. It's beautifully finished. It's statuesque as these things go. And the price is $15.98 per pair. The next speaker on my list is the JBL HDI 1600. Now this is a stand mount speaker. And though it looks like a horn speaker because it's a JBL, you think, oh, that's a horn. <laughs> For some reason, JBL says it isn't a horn. It's a waveguide around the tweeter. Um, it's a low sensitivity speaker. Again, I expected high sensitivity because it looks like a horn and horn waveguide. But anyway, I expected high sensitivity, but it's not. I think the sensitivity was 85 or 86 dB. But whatever the specs say, it was a really beautiful sounding speaker, a very relaxed sounding speaker. Just a real charmer. Um, you know, sometimes you, you think you know what you're going to get as a reviewer. I certainly do. It's JBL. Kind of looks like a horn two-way speaker. But it was a very sophisticated, sweet-sounding little speaker. The price, by the way, is $1,800 a pair. Next up is the Triangle Comet 40th anniversary speaker. I fell in love with this one. First of all, the look of it is freaking gorgeous. The finish is real rosewood, stunning. Absolutely one of the most beautiful speakers I've reviewed in ages, the wood that is. Um, it has a six inch paper mid woofer, a horn loaded tweeter. The, the, the sound was nothing like the previous two speakers I just described. It is lively. It is toe tapping <laughs> excitement. It's a fun speaker. It's not brash. It doesn't sound like an American speaker. It's made in France, by the way, uh, handcrafted in France, and just a fun, exciting speaker, but definitely one with refinement. Just beautiful, beautiful speaker. I have to include the ELAC Unify Reference, the Andrew Jones design speakers. This is maybe the last speaker that Andrew Jones did before he departed ELAC. 
Anyway, I love this speaker. It's, it has, of course, the concentric mid tweeter array, six and a half inch woofer. It's a very powerful sounding stand mount speaker for $1,000. Uh, but beyond that, there's just something about it. I, I keep coming back to the speaker. When I'm not actually uh, listening to a speaker to, for doing a review, the reference is the one I keep using. I would be remiss if I did not include the KEF LS50 Meta in this list. It's $1,500 a pair. Um, it's a terrific little speaker, and I think of this speaker as the sort of speaker that a pretty serious audiophile would build a very high-end system around, meaning it may be $1,500, but you're putting you know, $5,000 to $10,000 worth of electronics and source in front of it. It is that good that it would resolve what that system is providing. It's that good. Anyway. Great little speaker, amazing speaker for $1,500 for small rooms. The Dynaudio Emit 30, floor standing speaker, two six inch woofers, of course, a Dynaudio tweeter. Dynaudio tweeters are truly special, soft dome tweeter, fabric tweeter, but it is so pure, so relaxed, so effortless sounding. <laughs> Again, nothing like the Comet, which was just like vivid, alive, alive, alive. This guy is just, it's there. It's resolution, but it doesn't shout at you. It's not that kind of resolution. Just a wonderful, smoothly balanced, effortless speaker. Gorgeous. $1,700 a pair. So my next speaker choice is the Magnapan 0.7. It's been in the line about five years. This is an, this speaker does not sound like a box. It's not a box. It's a panel speaker. It's about an inch and a quarter thick. It's about five feet tall, full range ribbon speaker. It's a two way design, meaning it's a woofer ribbon and a tweeter ribbon. Um, it's not an easy speaker to drive. It takes a lot of muscle from an amplifier to make it go. But in addition to being a power hungry speaker, it needs some space to really strut its stuff. When I, when I mean space, when I say space, I mean it needs to be placed three feet or so out into the room away from the wall and certainly the corners. But when you give it space and when you give it uh, enough juice, enough current, because it's a four ohm speaker, it does, just opens up in a way that a box speaker at this price or even double or triple its price can never ever match. It is a truly spectacular speaker. And if you care, it is made in the USA. Now, Golden Ear Technology, great company founded by Sandy Gross, an industry veteran for sure. But this specific model, the Golden Ear BRX, it's a small stand mount speaker. You know what? It's my favorite Golden Ear speaker of all time hands down. It's so uh, open, fast, clear, high resolution. You want to use that word high res? This speaker's got that high res thing down. It dazzles. It will dazzle you with its clarity and it's small and makes a surprising amount of bass for its size. Has a folded ribbon tweeter, but it doesn't sound like most speakers fold, uh, a lot of speakers use folded ribbon tweeters nowadays, but there's something about the way it's implemented in the BRX that makes it truly special. Now we're talking about Canton there, Vento 836.2. You know, this was one of those speakers, I wasn't really sure what, to, what I was getting into. It's been ages since I heard one, but I fell in love with this speaker has a one inch ceramic dome tweeter. That's pretty uh, rare territory for a speaker that sells for $2,200. Ceramic dome tweeters are, are rare. And the 6.8 inch mid woofer is titanium. So the, the material choices are pretty lofty. The speaker is made in Germany and it's made, all the parts of, of the Vento are made in house by Canton. There's no outsourcing of anything that comes from this speaker. These last two recommendations 
uh, are different than the previous models because they are higher in their sensitivity, meaning you can use them with very low powered amplifiers. Well, for example, the Tecton 210 Perfect Set, its sensitivity is 96 dB per one, for one watt. And I actually used it with the two watt Decware amplifier, and it actually sounded pretty good. But anyway, it's called the 210 because it has two 10 inch woofers, mid woofers. And it also has the Tecton phased array of six one inch domes, which are actually used together as a mid-range array, and then the tweeter in the center is, act is the actual tweeter. It's very interesting. It's made in Utah. Rounding out the list is the Zoo Dirty Weekend. This model has been in the line, I'm guessing, about 10 years. I, I think I reviewed it when it was new. Uh, I fell in love with it. It's so simple. It's so beautiful. Um, it's $1,000 a pair, has a 10-inch full-range driver, plus a separate tweeter cabinet. The veneer is real wood. It's made in the USA. It's a honey. It's super easy to drive. I forget the sensitivity number, but you can use it with very low powered amplifiers. You can use it with high powered amplifiers as you can with the, with the Tecton. But anyway, the thing that's interesting about the way Zoo sells the Dirty Weekends is they're not always available. They make a, a production run of them, they sell through them, and then they're gone. So the next time the Dirty Weekend is available will be November 18th. So they're sort of taking pre-orders and then they sell them. So I will link to that in the description where you can check that out more, for more information about the Dirty Weekend. But as far as I can tell, November 18th is the date. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the amplifier portion of today's video. And that will be the first amp in the lineup is the Leak Stereo 130. Now Leak is an old British name. It recently came back to life with this model, the Stereo 130, which is actually 65 watts channel into 4 ohms, 45 watts channel into 8 ohms. It's a class AB design. It's very tasteful. It has a built-in DAC, so you don't need to buy a separate DAC with it. It's $1,000. There's also an optional beautiful uh, walnut case for it that adds considerable amount to its price, but I just had a great time with it. It has a built-in uh, phono preamp. It's just a gorgeous piece of audio for a very fair price. Um, great, great product. Next up is the Rogue Sphinx 3. Uh, it's a hybrid design. It has a tube preamplifier stage, built-in moving magnet, moving coil phono stage, class D output, 100 watts channel, made in the USA, made by a great company, sweet sounding amplifier, very, very powerful for its 100 watt per channel rating. It is uh, $1,595. Oh, this is exciting. The Outlaw Audio RR2160. It's a stereo receiver, um, 100 watts, 110 watts channel into eight ohms, 160 into four ohms, can drive, yeah, those MagnaPan speakers with ease, including the little LRS, which is even harder to drive, the MagnaPan LRS. But it's just a great sounding amplifier. Now, I, I think I'm going to get it in for review, and I will tell you all about this Mark II version. But if it's anything like the original version, I am going to be blown away. So I'm looking forward to doing that review probably within the next month or so. The Shit Ragnarok integrated amp without any options is $14.99. If you go for the optional DAC and phono section, price bumps up to $17.99. It's 60 watts channel into 8 ohms, 100 watts channel into 4 ohms. It's, a, it's actually a brute. That doesn't sound like a lot of power, but it's actually pretty darn powerful. It is, in, in the best possible sense, a piece of shit. I'm going to do a, a little quickie I'll try to make this fast, a side trip into lower powered amplifiers, starting with the L-Kit TU8600R. It's a 300B amplifier. It's actually a kit. It sells for $1,785. If you ever wondered about the magic, what is with the magic of 300B tubes, that amp is spectacular. 
interest is. The, the price, by the way, does not include the tubes, but, and it's not for beginner kit builders, but if you're up to it, it is just phenomenal. It's psychedelic in its amazingness, the L-Kit TU-8600R. Oh, I know I, I, I've mentioned this many times before, but I just have to, I can't help myself. The Deckware Zen Triode, it's not a kit. It's $995, though there was a long waiting list to get them. Uh, it's just a magical little amplifier team with the right speaker. It doesn't have to be ultra, ultra high sensitivity, but it's not for people who play loud or party. But it is just an amazing little amplifier. I just, I just can't say enough nice things about the Zen Triode. So now we're gonna talk about front end stuff, meaning DACs and phono stages and turntables. Uh, now some of these products, some of these amplifiers already have built-in DACs. So you won't need to add a DAC unless you wanna upgrade your digital performance. So I'm just gonna run down some of these really fast. The Shit Modius is $199. So if you're not like heavy into digital, that's a good place to go. If you are very serious about your digital, you wanna maximize your digital performance, the Shit Bifrost at $599 is definitely gonna up your ante in the digital realm. As for a phono preamp, because not all the amplifiers that I talked about have a built-in phono preamp, and again, back to shit, the shit Manny, which is a moving magnet, moving coil phono preamp. It is $129. It's a tiny little thing. It sounds so much better than it has any right to for that kind of money, but it is very, very nice. As for your turntable options, I have two choices for you. The Fluence RT81, it is $249. You know, that's not a lot of money in the audiophile world but it is a very solidly put together turntable. It comes with a very decent Audio-Technica 1895 cartridge. Um, it, it, nice arm. It's not too shabby at all for $249. I'm shocked that they could sell that table for that kind of money. Turntable number two, and by the way, both of these turntables are belt drive turntables. Turntable number two is a Riga. It's a P1. Uh, comes with a Riga cartridge called a Carbon. Uh, it is $525. I've had a decades-long love affair with Riga turntables. I sold them back in the day in the late 70s, early 80s. They're just so simple, so elegant, so beautiful. The tone arms are phenomenal. There's, they're not fussy turntables. There's not a lot that you can mess up once you have the cartridge mounted properly. There's not a lot you can mess up on a Riga. It just works and it sounds beautiful. So if, you, if you're into vinyl, get a decent turntable and over time, get a really nice phono cartridge and you will reap the rewards. So there you have it. This has been, <laughs> this has been it. This has been the recommended systems for around $2,000 to $4,000 for the complete system. And now it is time, <laughs> it is that time, it is time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. I like this one from Darren. He grew up near Buffalo, New York, and he has a soft spot for B&K components. The company went under about 10 years ago. Anyway, he has a pair of their stereo amplifiers. He's running them bridge to mono along with a B&K Pro 5 Sonata preamp. He also has a B&K TS-108 tuner and also a B&K Phono 10 preamp. Now the CD player is not a B&K. It's a new Marantz CD-6007 and the tape deck is an Iowa ADF-810 tape deck. Darren's running two turntables a new Techniques SL1210GR and a vintage Thorin's TD125 with an SME3009 arm. The speakers look familiar. They're Teal CS2.2s and they're being supported with a 10-inch Dayton Audio subwoofer. Darren has been building this system for years and he thinks it's finally at a place that he's really happy with the sound. All right. Yeah. Nice stuff.
very, very nice. Speaking of very nice, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is, without a doubt, the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Thank you so much for being here. If you like what I do, yes, please consider subscribing to this channel. And you might also want to check out my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And there is a link to my Patreon directly below in the description. And with that, I can now say I think my work here is at last complete. So again, thank you for watching and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.